You can cry on command. They are usually very fast, and that is why I decided to create this. Welcome to Free Talk, the show to help you learn English the fun and simple way. Ready? Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Free Talk Podcast. My name is Alan and I am the host of this show, this show where we have one objective to take your English to the next level, the fun and simple way. Today is our last pronunciation only episode. Uh, next Monday we are coming back to, well, next Monday we have the last of our uh, February episodes and on Wednesday we return to the um, to the regular schedule of one episode a week but now you have more than 20 episodes to to binge listen and to to keep practicing every day with your language so today because it is our last episode of this um, pronunciation uh, Fridays if you will we are going to talk about something that I, I think is um, really uh, important when we try to learn and when we try to pronounce English in a better way and it's something that I I, I think that I um, I don't know if I intuitively knew before so I, I was doing it I was using it I was even recommending people to do it my students before I even knew that this was like a thing a feature of language and what that is is uh, some information taken from one uh, course in American accent which is perhaps some of the most famous courses in American accent, which is called American Accent Training. And basically, today we are going to um, to talk about American intonation and more specifically about the American speech music. So here, the, the thing we are going to do today is check those things that can help you sound more American. Now, I know that a lot of you, because you, you have told me that perhaps you are more interested not uh, in American uh, English, in the, the American version of the language, but some of you are interested in, um, in British uh, English, uh, and particularly in the accent and the way they talk. Some others I have been uh, told that are also interested in um, Australian English, but the um, it just so happens that the um, the English that I speak, if we could say uh, that, is American English because that's uh, where I I got most of my language from. So most of my favorite movies and TV shows and some bands and and authors were American, and by uh, using that content, I was uh, naturally absorbing American English. And that is what we are going to talk here today, how or what things we can do to make our English sound more American. So if sounding more American is not what you are looking for, you can easily uh, skip this episode and come back next Monday. But if you want to know what we have to say about this, stay with us till the end and you will find it. Now, um, here, what we, what we are going to check here is uh, three basic features that we usually, as, uh, as students of English as a second language, we usually don't, maybe don't don't do but because we don't know that we should do so let, let's just cut uh, to the chase let's just go directly into 
the point. There are three things we should do if we want to sound more American. The first one of them is do not speak word by word. So this thing that I just did is a don't. Do not speak word by word. Do not speak word by word. Now, this is something that uh, it may be uh, uh, perhaps uh, difficult for you to do or even to accept because when we study English and when we do it in a, uh, in a normal way, when we go to, to, to school or when we buy books or when we, when we buy some kind of material that is designed to teach you the language, this is what we could call printed English because you are learning English from a book. And when we do that, we tend to learn words individually and the pronunciation of words individually because we usually learn using uh, lists of verbs or lists of words. And it's for us like the, the, the normal thing to do to learn these words individually and we know the pronunciation of each word. Uh, for example, in this sentence, we say do not speak word by word. I know the sound of each one of those words, but if we do that, if we pronounce, if we speak word by word, our English is going to sound mechanical uh -huh, and it's going to sound it's going to be evident when you speak like that, that English is not your native language. Now, of course, I don't think that your idea or your objective with the language is to fool people, to trick people into believing that you are American. I, I think that's not the case. That is off the table. What we want to do is to communicate, right? Or to, to understand, at least from my perspective, what I want with a language, any language, is to understand. For me, the communication part is secondary. Uh -huh. It's not completely irrelevant, but it's not my main objective. I want to understand because I want to absorb. I want to see. I want to, to get an insight into the way people think and they, how they translate that into the way they write or into the way they speak. So for me, it's much more of, a, of an understanding part. For you, maybe it's also uh, um, a, compre a, uh, yeah, a comprehension part, but also maybe a communication part. But I really, really don't think that any of us have the objective or the idea of uh, making people believe that English is our native language. But if we use this, uh, this way of speaking word by word, not only is it evident that we are uh, foreign, that we are not native speakers, but it's kind of unpleasant to hear, you know? It's like, just think about uh, your own language, whatever the language you speak, if you speak uh, Spanish or Portuguese or French or Italian, whatever the language you speak. When you listen to a foreign person talk in your language, and when they do it like this, when they, they are speaking so, so, um, you sp ma making so many pauses, it's kind of frustrating, it's kind of desperating, because you say, Oh, I mean, you don't say it, but you are thinking oh, this is going to take a while. This is going to take a long time because that is not the way you use your language. But they are, they are using it in that way because that is the way they learned it from a book. So you can avoid making that mistake by not speaking word by word. Okay, so that is the first don't. It's the first don't in, uh, in this preparation to speaking like an American. Now, the second 
uh, rule here or the second feature we can we are going to talk about is actually the perhaps the continuation of this first idea and it says connect words to form sound groups connect words to form sound groups so this is where where things get really really um, different from the way we usually learn English because what what you need to do is to start thinking on or seeing language as something completely different from the thing that you learned and this is where we have to see language to see words and sentences as sound units so not as words but as sounds sorry sound units now sometimes the complicated part is that these sound units don't really match or don't really correspond to a word that is written but we need to make this new sound so that we can connect the words I'm going to give you an example I, I'm taking this example from that book I uh, I talked to you about so let's start with um, the the words for to make the sentence Bob is on the phone Bob is on the phone okay in this case my five words are pronounced correctly Bob is on the phone but I am pronouncing them individually word by word and we said that is the first dump so to avoid uh, pronouncing words individually we need to see these five words as a new different thing that is a, a, a sound unit so in this case we are going to have not five sounds Bob is on the phone but we are going to have three and the first sound is going to comprise, it's going to include the first three sounds. So we are not going to say Bob is on, but these three words Bob is on sound like one sound unit. And that is Bobby Sun. Bobby Sun. Bobby Sun. Yeah, if you see this sound spelled out, that is V A V I Z A N, Vavisan, Vavisan, and when you put it together with the other two sounds, the two remaining sounds, the sound now is Vavisan the fun, Vavisan the fun, Vavisan the fun, Vavisan the phone, Vavisan, Vavisan the phone. And now this, by by making this um, this new group, this new sound unit, we are making our speech more fluid. And now we are. It's easier for the sounds to flow in your mouth, and it's easier for native speakers to understand you. And that is where where we can find the most important or the most relevant aspect of making your sound more American, of making your English more American. Maybe you don't want to, to sound American and you don't want to to pretend that you, you speak American English, but if you do it like this, and if you pronounce Bobby's on the phone, Bobby's on, Bobby's on the phone, hmm? where's Bob? Oh, Bobby's on the phone. When you talk like this, not only do you sound better, but it is easier for people whose native language is English to understand you. And that is what makes communication much more effective. Okay? So this is just an example. But every time that you find yourself speaking in individual words, take a pause. Uh -huh. If you are doing this in a conversation, that is not going to be possible maybe but if you are practicing let's suppose that you are reading uh -huh, you have a, a text you have a book 
you have a magazine, whatever you have, and you are practicing, pay attention to the way you are speaking, pay attention to the way you are saying words, and if you find that you are making this mistake of pronouncing words uh, individually, make a mark on that on that part, on those sounds that you are not putting together, and then try to put together what would be the words that you could say together, and then try to say it, and then change your Bob is on into Bob is on, and you are going to realize that your English is going to sound much more fluid, it's going to flow easier and people will understand you more and you will have more confidence because you will know that your English is much more natural. Yeah, If you don't want to say American, it's at least much more natural. Okay, so that is the second point here. Number one, do not speak word by word. Number two, connect words to form sound groups. Okay, now, um, the last uh, point we are going to touch here today is a very important one that actually maybe needs more um, time to, to, be, to be discussed. But today we are going to go through the, um, the generals of this point. And that is what this book calls the staircase intonation. The staircase intonation. Staircase. That is S-T-A-I-R-C-A-S-E. Staircase. So staircase is a group of stairs. What you use to go up or down, uh, each individual uh, step there is a stair. So in this case, a staircase, it's what you have in buildings or in your house, if your house has... Uh, two different levels, you use staircases to go up or to go down. Now, in this case we have staircase intonation. So that means that we are going to, uh, to make our sounds go up and down as if they were in a staircase. Okay, so let's see. When you say words in English, we can think uh, or we can imagine those words as if they were coming down uh, a number of stairs, a number of steps to go down. And that is like the, the first stair. We start in the beginning and then we go down. That going down is going down in sound. And sometimes we are going to create new stairs to make more emphasis on a new word. Uh, so let's see, for example, in the sentence we, I'm, I'm going to say, to say first the original sentence, that would be we are here, we are here. Now we make a contraction and we and are and we have we're, we're here, okay, we're here. Now if I say this this sentence without using staircase intonation, I will just say, we're here, we're here, okay? There are no changes, there are no nuances, it's the same intonation in the whole sentence, we're here. But when we put these words in a staircase, that on the top of the staircase we have we, on the, on the next uh, on the next step, coming down, we have er. On the next one, we have he. On the next one, on the last one, we have er. So now, our sentence sounds we're here. Okay? If you put this like in slow motion, you can really see those changes. We are here. It's going down we're here okay now when you say this word this sentence naturally without the slow motion these changes are going to be less evident 
but they are going to be there. So then you say, we are here. We are here. Okay? We are here. And now it's... Uh, may maybe people will not notice, but it's there. Your intonation in the form of a staircase is there. We're here. Okay? Now. <coughs> Sorry. Now. Um, something that also it's uh, different between English and other languages that is very distinctive to the American English is that American people double sounds that should be single. That is, American people stretch sounds out. They make them longer. One example, and the example mentioned here, is the word no. Uh -huh, the negative, N-O. In, in languages such as uh, Spanish or Japanese, this sound is what they call clipped. Because it's just like in one take, it's just no. In Spanish, we say no. No. That's it. N O no. But in English, this little, this short word fits on a staircase. On the first step of the staircase, we say no. And in the next step of the staircase, we say oh. So now the word not only is not only no, it's no, no, no. Okay? So even in this very short two-letter word, we are going to find this staircase intonation. Standard American for no is no, no. Okay? Once again, if you say it very, very quickly, it's th the, this uh, difference in the level is not very obvious, but it is there. No. No. Without intonation? No. With intonation? No. Okay? So that is this, um, that is this part of this, the American uh, staircase intonation for, for words. So these are three of the perhaps most distinctive uh, features of American English pronunciation as opposed to uh, British English pronunciation and uh, it's something that we usually don't learn in school uh -huh, because uh, we are more um, focused or we are occupying all of our time learning words how we learn words and we learn how to put those words together so that we can make sentences that make sense and that is i mean that's that's okay that's perfect we need to to learn those things and we need to acquire those things over a long period of time but this is something very important too because this is going to make the difference between many many things uh, if, for example, you um, uh, you you don't feel uh, comfortable speaking English because you know or you feel that your pronunciation sounds very Mexican or very French or very Italian, that can be an obstacle for you to actually use in the language. So if you know that your pronunciation is so much more like the American standard, this, this is going to, to inject you with some confidence and it's going to improve your English in the long term. Same thing happens if maybe you say, well, I don't have any problem with my accent. I can, I can, I mean, I can speak English with confidence. It, it doesn't matter if my language, it's, if my English is sounds very, very uh, Mexican, just to say uh, an example. Okay, so there is no problem with that, but if you speak, for example, using uh, pronouncing individual words, not only will you sound more Mexican, but it's going to be much harder for the person you are talking to to understand you. So this is just to ease communication, to make this interchange of 
ideas and words and language easier okay so these are the three things we checked today do not speak word by word use uh, uh, the connection of words connect words to form sound groups and use staircase intonation so what can you do to put this into practice just be very very uh, attentive to the things that you listen now if you are listening to only this podcast uh, you will not find maybe this uh, this these things that I am talking in my talking because I I try to make this uh, uh, the, uh, the content that I I make here I try to make it above all things comprehensible so that means that I cannot uh, speak like the way I usually do because you will not understand me and the objective here is exactly to make this division there is the real world where people are not concerned about you understanding they are just passing information along in this case it's the opposite I I really want for you to understand what's going on and sometimes that means that I have to perhaps regulate my speed or choose very carefully my words etc so you are listening to this podcast you are getting this information that's great but now you need to try listening to other things just the news the radio uh, maybe a different podcast just try to add some variety in the voices that you listen so that you can see and you can listen how this information that I am giving you today is actually applied in uh, in native uh, American speakers okay so um, that's going to be the end of this episode on pronunciation do's and don'ts in American intonation so this is going to be our last episode of this um, uh, pronunciation only that we were having on Fridays this next Monday we have a an episode that I think uh, you 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 will like it's a thing it's a, a topic that I think it might be in interesting for you to hear it will certainly be interesting for me to talk but you will have the final decision so this Monday we have our last episode of this um, marathon of episodes on February and on Wednesday we return to our uh, normal uh, program. So thank you very much for listening. If my voice sounds like, uh, I don't know, softer or different, that's because I'm sick. Yeah, I, I got this uh, I think I, I'm, I'm getting a cold or something on my throat. It's uh, I don't know. It's painful to talk right now, but uh, well, it, someone had to do a podcast for for today, so I, I was the one. But um, anyway, I will see you next Monday. Thank you very much. Have an awesome weekend, and I will see you then. Keep it simple.